Hello crafting friends and welcome to this 16th entry of the Thoughtful Knitter video journal. My name's Ailey and I'm coming to you from my home in the northernmost reaches of the Scottish mainland. It is fantastic to have you here. Um, I just want to say a great big warm welcome to anyone who's new. I hope you enjoy what you see and that you'll come back to join us again. And um, a great big thank you to anyone who has been here before and has decided to put aside some of their time to spend with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so first things first, I want to apologise in advance for any flakes of dust. There's one that is going across the screen. Um, it's quite a drift day here today. It's quite stormy and um, windy and we're going between squally showers and sunshine and it's going really quickly because of the speed of the wind so um yeah there's not a lot i can do about it other than be better at my housework but i would rather knit so that's not going to happen um yeah so before we get into the episode proper um i just have a couple of kind of admin things to chat about uh, first things first, I'll put on the screen all the places you can find me online if you want to connect um, anywhere other than just here on YouTube. And um, anything that I do mention will be linked in the description box down below. Um, yes, and my videos are time stamped into chapters so that you can skip backwards and forwards and stop quite easily without um, cutting me off mid sentence. So the admin things, um, first on the list is the Curry In or Cool Off Make Along that we have running at the moment. It is coming to an end. It is due to finish at midnight British summer time um, on the first, oh that's not right. I did my poll strong. It's midnight GMT <laughs> on the first of March. I was a step ahead of myself. I don't know why I thought. Anyway, my brain does not always work very well. So yes, it's coming to an end um, on the 1st of March and it's been really, really fun to see everything that people have been doing. Um, I will link my last episode um, because you'll be able to see the prize bundle there. But there has been an addition. This beautiful piece of wood turning artisanal delight has been um what's the word has been donated <laughs> um as a prize and this has been made by woody nests um, i'll have everything linked down below and um, it is a 3.75 millimeter hook and i it feels lovely in your hands i've actually had a wee shot and it works brilliantly. So um, Woody Ness is a maker who is based down on the shores of Loch Ness and who makes lots of lovely things, um, including crochet hooks and darning eggs, darning mushrooms, uh, yarn bowls, that sorts of things. So um, I'm delighted to have added this to the prize bundle. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to see the rest of the items if you go on to the last episode and you click on this section I think it's to do with the make along it's entitled something like that so uh, yeah that was the only thing to say it's um if you want to take part you need to do so do so on Instagram and um, you just follow the hashtags there post your entries there so there's a finished objects prize which is the main prize and then there's also a participation prize. If you don't have an Instagram account can't access it or if your Instagram account is set, set to private then just email me your entries and um, the email address is thethoughtfulknitter at gmail.com. So yeah I think that's everything on that side of things. Uh, the second thing to say is I, as usual, am way behind my, way behind my ideal schedule, my dream schedule. Um, so 
I haven't been on to tell you about a interview that I did. Um, I actually did the interview back in September, but it was aired, well, it was released at the beginning of January. And that was an interview with my absolute favourite podcast. It's an audio podcast. Um, and it is called Why I Knit. And it is hosted by Dr Mia Hobbs, who is a clinical psychologist. And it's all about delving into the reasons that people knit and what they get from it, how it helps their general well-being. And she has now, this, I was part of the fourth series, which is now finished. So in total, she has 20 episodes. I've mentioned her before. I think everyone should listen to them because they're fascinating. Um, but yeah, I was delighted to have taken part. So um, I will link that down below too. And if you're here because you heard me there, um, massive thank you for coming over to spend some time with me. It's, I'm just delighted that you have decided to join me. Um, and the third thing, is I have noticed a wee uptick in subscriptions over the last day and I am pretty certain that is due to a mention that I have had on Andrew of Albanach Knitters podcast. Um, if you don't know who Andrew is or the Albanach Knitter, um, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> he's exploded onto the scene and he's already got over 5,000 subscribers and he's a joy. Um, he is an absolute natural in front of the camera. He is a Baptist church minister, so he's really good at public speaking and engaging people. And um, he is based on the Isle of Arran. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, so if you are here mainly because of the Scottish connection, then you definitely need to have a uh, head over to Andrew's channel because he does loads of um, history stuff about the island and about Scotland and he does lots of scenery and he shares lots of shorts about what's been going on on the island and like summer festivals with pipes and all sorts of things. So yes, definitely check him out. Also, um, if you are in the market for a retreat, a knitting retreat, he has started hosting them. So I think his first one is in April and then there's another one scheduled for September. Um, they will have a spiritual element because he is a Baptist church minister, which if you're not aware is a Christian uh, tradition. And yeah, it looks like a beautiful place that he's um, hosting them. So again, if you're looking for an excuse to go on a knitting retreat with a spiritual element, then check him out. Okay, that's that's enough of the hard sale of everybody else. <laughs> um, let's get into the knitting and the crafting and what you've probably come here for. Um, I would normally do a what I'm wearing section, but I have spoken about this garment before. Um, I will link which episode it is. I think it was right at the beginning of December that I spoke about it. Um, but this is the Braids of Grass. It's a pattern by Albina McLaughlin. And um, I knitted it in Plutolope Hail Double. I think it was like beige heather. Um, but all my details will be below. Um, I'll also link my Ravelry pages there. If you can't access Ravelry and you have any questions, do please just email me and I will try to help you out. Um, yeah, so let's get on with finished objects. Before we dive into finished objects, I just have remembered one thing that I should have said. Um, I have a little friend with me who I introduced to you on the last episode and I asked for help in naming her and uh, I had some really good ones. But the one I've gone for is Morig. And uh, so this is Morig Moose and she might just be our little podcast pet. She makes me very happy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have been currying in good style over the last few months. Um, 
winter is at my absolute worst time of year. I hate it. It's really dark, it's really miserable and the nights are long. But spring is starting to show its face around here. Um, I mean we're far from it yeah because we have a saying in this part of the world, never cast a clout till me's out and that basically means don't get rid of your winter wardrobe until you're in June. So um, yeah it's been unseason unseasonably mild for about the last month. Um, just when I have been busy knitting all sorts of really cosy cosy things. But I've really enjoyed them. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of the things that I've finished. Uh, one of them was a work in progress on the last episode and that is these. These lovely socks. Oh, got them back to front. What's going on? So these are the Love the Rain socks by From Devin with Love. Um, she doesn't seem to be on Ravelry but she is on Etsy and I bought a kit for this. So this is knitted in Drops Nord. Um, and the good thing about the kit is that, I mean, you only need tiny, tiny, tiny bits for this. And I did not fancy buying like seven balls of yarn just to use those tiny amounts. Um, I knitted it according to pattern. Um, so yeah, we have this lovely colour work bit here with the clouds and the rain. Then we have some stripes for the rainbow and we have sunny toes. <laughs> So yeah, these were really cheering me up over the darkest days of winter. Um, they are really soft and cosy. The pattern is lovely. What I will say though is I won't be in a hurry to knit colour work socks again. <laughs> um, they, the thing is, you have to get it over your heel. So what I ended up doing is like going up a needle size for these bits and down here, this bit here, and um, going up a needle size and working really loosely because my tension is actually really quite good for colour work but because it's got to go over the heel and I've got a high instep it just was not happening, it was not going over my heel. So I had to do that to get it to work but I really don't like how I don't know, it just seems quite loose and it's not as nice a fabric as the normal knit in here. So I don't know whether if I was ever to attempt them again, which I'm not in a rush to do, um, whether I might actually just knit a larger number of stitches over the colour work, go up a size or two over the colour work and then go back down to my normal size for the body of the sock. Um, I'm quite happy to knit colour work mittens or gloves because they don't have to go over a heel, they just have to go in your hands so there's not that same need of stretch. Um, but yeah, if you are a fan of colour work socks then yeah, I would recommend these. They are really comfy, the pattern is clear, straightforward. Um, I mean there only is really this section here of colour work like Fair Isle and this tiny bit here and the rest is striping and the striping bit just went really really quickly. Um, so I knitted these on, the body was on a 2.5 millimetre uh, needle and I did this on a 2.75 millimetre needle. Um, yeah, so I don't think there's too much more to tell you about those other than they are very joyful and soft and yeah I was quite I'm quite taken with the drops nord I would use that again and um, I think the alpaca content makes it nice and soft which is lovely for like a bed soak or something um, and the drops nord it's a non super wash but it does have um, nylon in it so it will hopefully wear quite well so yeah that is finished object number one and finished object number two is this beauty here which is the pelto collar 
it is not coming up the colour on screen, but I've had that before with this. Um, it's a lot greener than that. It's coming up very blue, but it's much more turquoisey than what's showing. Um, but yeah, I knitted this pattern. This is a pattern by Jenny Ansa, who is Koti Kotone, I think is her brand name. She is a Finnish knitwear designer. Um, I knitted one of these for my mum for Christmas and um, struggled to let go of it because it was really nice. Um, so I decided I was going to make myself one. Um, but since I finished it, I've, I mean, I finished it about a month ago, I've only had it on once because it's not been properly cold. I mean, it's been cold, but it's been like 10 degrees, well, between... I don't know, like seven and 10 degrees Celsius centigrade, which is not, that's not cold, cold. That's more like kind of spring temperatures. Um, but it is so cozy and it's brilliant. I just thought this is going to be so much nicer than like a cowl because cowls are quite gappy sometimes. Um, so this just sits on like a polo neck. And um, it, it's one of these, now what's everyone calling them? A collar or a dicky. I think that seems to be a North American thing. But um, yeah, so I don't think, well, I can try and put it on just now, but it might not work with this funnel neck. Oh, it does. So it just sits like that under your coat. And then it's like that. So this is um, like a really nice dip stitch like um I worked for the Cargill jumper sweater um by Rebecca of the Korea Bea podcast I did the taste knit for that and I enjoyed working that um so that's what this is like um but it's kind of offset I think it's meant to be like barley or green and then the back <clears throat> Ooh, sorry, the back is like a half brioche, so it's really squishy, squishy, um, and so it's got a good amount of stretch in it, which makes it really good. It's like one size; it's gonna fit anybody. Um, yeah, so I'm fair taken with this. I don't think it'll be my last one. Um, the yarn I used. First of all, I had to go up needle sizes. Um which is generally the case for me because I'm quite a tight knitter. Um, I think I went up to a five millimetre and a 4.5 for the ribbon. Um, it's got a lot of ribbon there. Um, yeah, and I knitted this with Black Isle Yarn, Colleen Sock Base, her old version. She's got a newer version that has a, um, it's thinner and it has a longer yardage and um, it's maybe more tightly spun. Um, so I knitted it with that and with drops, what's it called? The mohair. Drops kid silk? No? You know what I mean. Um, in the colourway petrol, I think. So the Colleen Sock by Black Girl Yarns, it is Blue Faced Leicester and Mohair. I can't remember the proportions. I think it's maybe like 85% blue, blue Faced Leicester and 15% Mohair, something like that. Um, if you're a long-term viewer, you have seen this yarn on multiple occasions. Um, I had an ill-fated jumper that I knit and ran out of yarn, or I was going to run out of yarn. Um, I then thought that I might use it for the Cargill, but I decided I didn't want it to be too, too variegated. I thought it might take away from the overall effect. So then I thought I might make a... What's it called? I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. Um, 
but I decided after making the cardigan it being really too hot for me to wear um, that maybe a jumper was not the best use of this so I decided to use it for this and oh, I feel quite free now that I've broken up a uh, jumper's quantity. Um, it was kind of hanging over me and I didn't realise it. Kind of, I've had it for years, it was a splurge and I was always putting this pressure on myself that it had to be a beautiful, beautiful finished garment that was worthy of the yarn and I was never finding the right thing. So now that I've like used half of it for this and I only have the other half to use, I just feel like, well, I'm definitely going to wear this. I'm going to get so much use out of it. So anything extra is a bonus and yeah, I just feel liberated. <laughs> I did the same with uh, the one that I knitted for my mum. That was also out of a sweater quantity. Sorry, I can't, I can't see sweater. I know it's like the international thing in knitting, but I am from Scotland and we call them jumpers. So anytime I say sweater, I just think that I sound like I'm putting on pretensions. So yes jumper quantity. <laughs> um, I split up that quantity as well. It was um, yarn that I'd bought because it was on clearance. It was like a really good price. Didn't really know what to make with it. Had a vague idea when I bought it and then discounted that. So again, I just felt this lovely feeling of like freedom breaking into that and now only having half of it left and knowing that I could make maybe more accessories or team it up with something else for something striped or yeah it just feels like it's got more possibilities now so yes those were my musings <laughs> on my finished objects so yeah definitely recommend this one um i know there's a lot of people knitting these kind of things just now and i can see why because it's really handy uh yeah so those were my finished objects, both very much in keeping with the Curry In or Cool Off Mal. And uh, I also have a couple of works in progress on that theme as well. So let's get on to those. Works in progress. Right, the first one does not look that different to the last time you saw it. Um, this is my Granny Go Rounds cardigan. Um, the only thing I have done is work, oh goodness, um, is work this button band and collar, um, got button holes as well, there's five of them. I haven't touched my gazillion ends. and I haven't started the sleeves and I don't really know why because I really enjoy this project Um, I think what's happened is I was going great guns with it until I ran out of the contrast colour here for the button bands and I had to wait for it to come and when it eventually did come I had moved on to something else and then because it involved thinking and having to decide where your buttonholes were going to go, um, I kept putting it down and doing something else because I didn't want to have to think. So, um, yeah, I think for these ends, what I might do, because I'm going to put these off, I know I am. What I might do is set aside, you know how people do like a scrappy Sunday? I might try and do like a sew your ends in someday or something like that just to force myself to do it because I will always choose knitting over sewing in ends. Um, but yeah, so for anyone who hasn't seen this project before, this is the Granny Go Round cardigan by Iron Lamb. Um, it is a crochet pattern and it's written in UK terms. Um, I am using up all of my non-superwash scraps to make this and it's 
the plan was for it to be like a cozy in the house type cardigan you know when like you've got clothes on and it's maybe not the, the temperature drops but you don't really want to put your heating up um at the moment i just like put on a fleece or something but i'd far rather put on something cozy and woolly so that was the vision for this one and i was completely inspired i had never heard of the pattern before but i was totally inspired by kirsty of the will and wishes podcast um back in i think i started this back in september um and like i say was going great guns with it and then ran out of yarn um but yeah i definitely remember working on it when the queen died um, because that was all over the media and you know it that way where memories go into your stitches <laughs> so I remember working away on it and um, everything being about the Queen and um, her legacy and whatnot so um, yeah I love it I need to start working on it again because it's gonna be great to wear I'm really happy with it apart from this row I think that is too thick a yarn. What I'm doing is I'm holding, I'm either using DK sport weight, DK and worsted. And then my finger in four ply weight, I am holding double. But this was RN weight. And it's also a wool and spun RN weight, I think. So it's really quite bulky. So I think it's a, it was maybe a mistake. But I'm not taking it out now. So yeah, I'm enjoying this. It's very Moorish. I need to get back to it. Whether I have it done in time for the end of the make along or not, I don't know, but it will be done at some point. And the only other project I've been working on for the Korean or Cool Off Mal is I decided that I wanted to make a hot water bottle cover. So I have had a kit from, where did I get it from? Oh, my brain. Lucy Locket Land. I bought it a couple of years ago. The intention was always to knit it during Advent. It's never happened. And, um, it came to January time and I was listening to Louise of the Keithness Craft Collective. She's got a podcast, an audio podcast. And during December, she did a daily episode, 10 minute episode, kind of like a Vlogmas, but for audio. And she carried it on into January. And she was doing something one day, I think her theme was on reusing and recycling and she mentioned about old jumpers and how you can like liberate yarn from them or you can felt them and I had this absolute aha moment where um, I'll, I'll insert a picture but I've got a jumper that I knitted a few years ago and it's lovely but the fit of it just isn't right um, it was knit flat and sewn up, uh, knit flat in pieces and pieced together. Um, and the waist shaping and hip shaping, I think, are just a bit too high up my body. They just never quite looked right. The sleeves were too tight in comparison. And if I was to knit it again, I would modify the pattern to do it top down in the round. There's no reason it couldn't have been done that way. Um, it was the wicker work by Michelle Wong and as you can see from the picture it's a beautiful cabled pattern um, and I kept thinking well it's not it wasn't that well made in terms of like there were different mistakes with it didn't really want anyone else to have it if it didn't fit them didn't think it was good enough to go to a charity shop because it was quite a pilly yarn, very pilly yarn. I knitted it with 100% um, Blue Face Leicester from West Yorkshire Spinners 
and it just pills like nobody's business. Um, and I also thought, well, I'm not going to get the yarn bag out of it because my semen is pretty good, even if I do say so myself. Like once it's in, it's not coming back out. So, um, yeah, I decided, well, what am I going to do with it? And when I heard this idea from Louise, I thought, <gasps> that's what I need to do. I need to felt it and make it into a hot water bottle cover. <clears throat> so, that was a long preamble. This is what it now looks like. Sadly, you can't really see the pattern and I thought that it would maybe still be on it and I could get you know some nice texture on my hot water bottle cover. Um, but I didn't do this by hand. I just thought, oh, who's got the time and the um, muscles to do that? It would take ages. So I just stuck it in the washing machine at 60 degrees. And I think I went a bit overboard. <laughs> It was in there for an hour. Um, it is really thick and look how tiny these <laughs> sleeves are. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this, but I think it's going to be too thick to go through my sewing machine. So what I'm thinking is I might cut out the shape for the hot water bottle cover into, you know, front and back and maybe a flap. And I think I might blanket stitch around it, around the edges, um, and hold it together that way. So, yeah. Anyway, I thought, it's not showing much at the moment, but I thought I would share it because I needed that aha moment when I heard Louise and I thought maybe somebody else needs that. Maybe someone else is looking for something to do with a knit that they're just not quite happy with. They don't think they can get the yarn back out or maybe they don't want to work with the yarn again. Like in this case, it was quite pilly and um, yeah, I don't think I would really use it for a, a garment again. Um, although it is actually in my granny go round, that's out there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I thought there's an idea, why not pass it on? So yeah, that's what I have been working on and will continue to work on until um, the end of the month. And hopefully I'll have those finished in time for the end of the Korean or cool off mill. Um, yeah, so I think that's mostly the knitting content for today. I'm just gonna have a wee chit chat and cheerio section where I'll fill you in on a bit of kind of life stuff and then that's it so if you're not interested in that that's fine the knitting and crafting content is finished thanks so much for being here and if you do want to hear a little bit about what's been going on with me then i'll see you on the next section hi if you're still here um, I don't normally share very much about what's going on in my life outside of crafting on here, but I'm figuring that if you're still here and you're interested, then why not? Um, it might help to explain my rather erratic recording schedule and um, it'll also kind of give you a heads up for the next few months. So um, the short version of this very long story is that most of you know that I struggle with chronic conditions um, and that my health is quite up and down. I've kind of mentioned that on and off since the start of recording. Um, over the last six months, it's really, really, really taken a dip. And um, the short version is that I have been suffering from migraines at least one a day for the last almost six months. And that has massively impacted my life um, and obviously my ability to record and produce content. Um, screen time does not help matters and also I'm spending my most, most of my time either having a migraine in the build up or in the recovery. Um, so my brain is mush, it's been completely pulverised. <laughs> um, but, and that also maybe helps to explain why I have so much, oh, sorry, I'm kicking the, the um, what's that thing called? Tripod. Um, 
it might help to explain why there's so much cuts and editing in my podcast and also why I can never remember words <laughs> because my brain is, like I said, mush. But um, that's the background. I am going to have a few different medication changes and things coming up that might be quite hard going. So because of that, I think I'm probably going to struggle to record. Um, so my plan at the moment is before those changes come into effect and while I'm still having little pockets of, um, what's the word, like lucidity <laughs> um, or energy every now and then, um, I'll record in batch, maybe ahead of time, and release them over the next month or two. Um, so the only reason I'm sharing that is that I don't tend to talk about uh, world events or anything on here. It is very much focused on the crafting. But if I, if something monumental has happened and I don't mention it, it's probably because I've recorded this in the past and then from when you're seeing it. So um, hopefully that'll be the only thing that kind of might st stick out a bit. But otherwise, I think I will just release them. Um, apologies in advance if I'm not able to reply as quickly as I normally do. But um, I really, really do enjoy your comments. I love the interaction. Um, it feels nice to know that there are other people out there chatting and um, spending time with me and that I'm not just like chatting to myself. And yeah, I do enjoy that connection. So please do keep reply it keep commenting um but like I said if it takes a wee while that is why it's not to do with being rude or uh, too busy or anything um yeah so um the only other thing to say is that the make along winners I will announce those on my next episode um it might just be if I've already recorded the episode ahead of time, I might just put in like a wee bit of footage and a voiceover. Um, but I know a lot of people have been having problems with bots and things and scammers trying to claim that they are the channel host and they're leaving comments telling people to contact them for prizes. I will never contact you that way. Um, if you go on, I will mention it on here, on screen, um, it will not be in the comments. So just a forewarning not to get hoodwinked. Um, yeah, so looking forward to hearing from you, what you've been up to over the last, um, what, like seven weeks or so, the beginning of the year. And um, I'm not looking for sympathy. I didn't share all that for sympathy. It's just a bit of a, um, I, I know that people have it a lot worse. And um, yeah, I'm not looking for sympathy. I just thought I would share it for practical reasons. So uh, yeah, I'm wearing now. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna try and get this edited at some point over the next few days and uploaded. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves, keep crafting and uh, enjoy the spring as it comes or autumn if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Take care. Bye.